Well, first, I want to give reverence to Almighty God, His Son Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. And I also want to give reverence to Pastor Derek and Cassie. Could you please give them a big hand clap? All right, I also want to give reverence to uh, and honor to my pastor, Tony Kemp. If you don't know who he is, you should just look him up. He's an awesome man of God. But I wouldn't even be here if he hadn't really just took me alongside. So it's always good to honor those that have brought you along. I also want to honor Steve and Sharon. If you can give them a hand clap, just give them a wave. And of course, Dale and Marie, who have uh, you know welcomed uh, us into their home. So could you please give them a big hand clap? And I know there's another pastor here. Pastor? Uh, youth Pastor Lindsay. Youth Pastor Lindsay. Could you please give him a hand clap? And we went to school together. Yes, we did. Ministry school together. <laughs> So I am really happy to see you here. It's awesome. <coughs> and I also want to honor uh, my wife of 34 years. Robin, just give him a wave. And I want to honor all of you. Now why would I want to honor all of you? Because God does. And also because you're obedient. Hebrews 10.25 says what? Forsake not the assembling together. Okay? Even has some that have done, you know, especially as you see the day approaching, and the day is approaching. Okay? We're closer to eternity now than we were yesterday. That's right. Okay? That nobody knows the day or the hour, but you'll know the season, right? That's right. And I believe we're in a season. Okay? Now I decree and declare that the kingdom of heaven is in this place, and I speak peace to all who will receive it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Everyone should say amen. amen. I'm not just saying that as eloquent words. I'm actually speaking something into the atmosphere. Okay? Okay? And I also want to thank God and I want to partner with his holy angelic host. And Father, I know that they hearken to the voice of your word, not mine. So Father, we welcome your holy heavenly host to uh, do whatever you want done here tonight for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, tonight I want to talk about forgiveness and reversing judgments. Hmm. Boy, it got quiet. <laughs> this is a healing service though, right? It's a healing service. This is really, it really is necessary. It's necessary for me. I preach to myself too. Just have somebody go down the road and cut you off. I'm just giving you just a, like a hypothetical. Not that that would ever happen. Have somebody cut in front of you, do something crazy. And what's the first thing out of your mouth usually? Praise God. <laughs> it's like hit the dome, right? You know, hit the lights. So, you know. But you take a deep breath and go, bless them, Lord. Keep everybody safe around them, but bless them, you know. And uh, it's important, you know. We need this word. We really need this word. You know, there's something in the Bible called the law of response. I kind of want to give you a little instruction as we go along. Uh, the law of response. Jesus always asks people a question. And he's always looking for a what? A response back. It's our response, our expectation of the service, which actually you brought up, Pastor. Our expectation of the service, what does God want to do? I mean, God wants, will there be miracles tonight? Look at somebody and say, yes. yes. There will be. Will people get healed tonight? Yes. yes. Okay. How do I know this? Because God confirms his word with signs, wonders, and miracles. He does not confirm me. Okay, that's why I know there will be healings, because I'm going to teach his word. Okay? Okay, law of response. God is looking for a response from us. Okay? When I gave God honor, that's actually a response. Okay? When I gave you honor, 
I'm actually seeding something into the atmosphere. When I decree and declare that the kingdom of heaven is in this place, and you say amen, amen. <laughs> now what was impossible is now made possible right. in this realm. Amen. Okay? Now when I speak shalom, peace, to all who will receive it and you receive it, amen. that means nothing missing, nothing broken in your life. So you're saying yes. Amen. So you're bringing what from the heavenly realm here into the atmosphere now. Okay? Healing is here now. <laughs> okay? Yeah, you just grab it. Okay? Acts 3 and 19, you know, it says, uh, uh, repent and then uh, be converted. And that's actually twofold. This is part of the instruction. This is not my message. Repent means metanoia. means change your mind when you're hearing the word of God and God speaks to your heart and you find out that you're actually acting contrary to the word. Okay, what you do is you change your mind, you change your thinking, and you align it with him. And metanoi, that's change your mind, epistrapo, be converted, means you do an about face. It's a military term. Amen. So real repentance is about changing your mind and then changing your direction. It's an action. Amen. Okay, faith is what? It's an action. Faith without works is dead. Jesus says, what to the man with a withered hand? Stretch out your hand. He could have just said... I can't. Okay? And what does he do? As he stretches out his hand, he becomes whole. Amen. Faith, action. Okay? Metanoia, change your mind. Epistrapo, about face, change your direction, move in that direction. Okay? So as you're hearing the word of God, it might not necessarily apply to you tonight. But I guarantee you it'll apply to you somewhere down the road. Amen. Or somebody that you need to minister to. Okay? So it's really good for us. Perfect theology, Jesus is our example. Luke 23 and 34. If you want to open your Bibles, turn them there. Jesus is on the cross. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. So Jesus' example, even as he's on the cross and he's done nothing wrong, is he's doing what? He's forgiving us. Okay? He's forgiving the ones that put him there. And I put him there. You put him there. Amen. Okay? We've all done it. There is none righteous, not one, except for Jesus. So Jesus is our example. Now turn to Luke 6:36. Therefore be merciful, just as your Father also is merciful. Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Okay? That's conditional, right? Forgive, and you will be forgiven. What if you don't forgive? Are you going to be forgiven? See, a lot of people really think this. They really do. They think, hey, look, I've received Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. I've received the work he's done on the cross but I can live any way that I want and I can hold things against people and I don't have to forgive after that. You really think that's true? No. I guarantee you, if you hold that philosophy, if you hold that belief system, you'll bust hell wide open when you die. <laughs> uh -uh. You'll see what I'm saying is true when you start seeing miracles, okay? Yeah. Jesus confirms his word with signs, wonders, and miracles. Right. Okay? We cannot take that position as believers in Christ. We have no right to. How can I say we have no right to? Did you remember where you came from? None righteous. All our works are like filthy rags. So how can we hold something against someone else? How can we just sit there and be, you know, even though they've hurt us and there's a lot of pain? How about, how about you ever had like a, a, an injury? Somebody's accused you of something, has done something to you that was just not, you didn't, you didn't ask for it to happen. It just happened. And you're totally innocent in the whole process. You ever had any injury like that? That's the worst one. Because it hurts more than all. So you know that's the way Jesus was on the cross. He felt that pain. Okay? But even in our righteous, what we call righteous anger. Okay? And, and we hold on to that issue. What we're doing is we're doing ourselves a huge disservice. Amen. Okay? We're actually holding ourselves in bondage, even though we've done nothing wrong. So we can't afford to hold on to it. 
all right? Even though you've done nothing wrong, even though the pain hurts bad, you still have to just let it go, okay? So Matthew 7, 1 and 2 is, Judge not that you be not judged, and for with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. These are just scriptures I just, just want to throw out so that you know where we're going in this message. Okay, we're talking about forgiveness and we're talking about judgments. Okay, Matthew 6, 14 and 15 is this for if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Now, if is a conditional word, isn't it? It says if. <laughs> okay? But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Okay? So before I go any further, the most important thing is salvation. What good is it to have a whole body that's just, you know, you're, you're in perfect health, but you die and you go to hell? Okay, so I'm just going to ask this question because I don't know everybody in this room. If you were to die tonight, you just, you just talked to God about this. If you were to die tonight and you don't know where you would end up, then you need to raise your hand so I can pray for you. Everybody good with Jesus tonight? Amen. Okay, thank you. You can put those hands down. Excellent. See, I knew there was, I knew, I knew. As I was meditating today and praying, I was actually praying for you too. Okay? You'd probably say, oh my goodness. How would you know? Well, see, I, I hand wrote this in my notes right here. Do a salvation call right here at Matthew 16, 15, at Matthew 6, 15. Okay? So if you were to die today and you don't know where you're going, that means, guess what? Are you a little afraid about dying? Yes? Yeah, okay. So... Everybody's going to bow their heads and close their eyes. I want you to, too. Okay? Now, it's not about the words. It's about what you, that you mean it in your heart. Okay? So I'm just going to lead you in a prayer, and everybody's going to say this prayer. Okay? And then what I want you to do after service is I want you to see Pastor Derek and Pastor Cassie, and I just want you to talk with them. Okay? Amen. You good with that, guys? Okay. Say, Father... I've tried things my way, and it's not working out too good. I know that your son Jesus died on the cross for me, and I accept him right now. Forgive me of my sins for all my mistakes, and wash me with his blood. I am now yours. Evil one, I put you on notice. You now no longer have any right to any part of my life. I have been washed by the blood of the Lamb. I am clean. I am His child. I am saved. Thank you, Father. And I will live for you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. So now, when the evil one brings up your past, things you've done wrong, remind him of his future. Amen. Okay? Because now that, that old thing is dead and gone. Okay? Hallelujah. So let's talk about forgiveness. What, what is forgiveness? Even though that's like two miracles right there. Praise God. Told you there'd be miracles tonight. <laughs> what is forgiveness? Well, I'm a Greek and Hebrew kind of guy. I don't know if you like studying the original language. I do. Okay. As you're going to see over this next few days. Uh, the word for forgiveness in the Greek is apeluo. And it means to let go. To release a debtor. Not to press one's claim against. And see, we talked about, you know, it's like when, you get, when, when somebody causes you harm that you've done nothing wrong, it's like you have a claim against them. Okay? And to let that thing go, man, when you let it go, it hurts. I mean, it does. I mean, it's like part of your flesh. It's like, oh, God. 
rain down fire on them, you know, <laughs> right? But you know what? And then Jesus, you know, he says, no, no, you don't know what spirit you're of. You know, you got to let it go. You got to let it go. You know, so we, we, we don't hold one's claim against whatever it is. We, we set them free. And actually, when you set them free, you're actually setting yourself free. Okay. You really, you really truly are. Okay? You're not solidifying anything in your life. See, one thing you got to understand about the devil is he's a legalist. Amen. He's into legalism. Amen. He really is. Amen. How did he get into the world in the first place? He wrote the book on legalism. Okay? He wrote the book. So when you, when you hold on forgiveness, what you're doing is now you have actually given him a legal loophole to mess with your life. <laughs> and if you don't deal with the issue, he can drag you straight into the pit with him. Okay? He's a legalist. So letting things go. How important is that? So when you hold on to things, especially things against other people, things against yourself, that's, that's unforgiveness, okay? It blocks your ability to receive. <laughs> How many are looking for the things that God has for them? Maybe, it's, maybe you think some of them have been on hold for a while. Okay? Well, when we hold on to things, it prevents God's grace from landing on us. Amen. God's favor. It doesn't mean he doesn't love us. He loves us. He loves us to pieces. You know, uh, but he, he says, you know what? It's like the, the plane of my grace is in a holding pattern over your life. And I'm waiting for the runway to clear so I can land on you. Okay? So you can't hold on to things. Okay? Not against people. And here's the one that a lot of people think, well, I've forgiven everybody. Well, how about have you forgiven yourself? That's the hardest one. Okay? So, you know, you hold things against yourself. And it's the same thing. If you hold against things against somebody else or if you hold things against yourself, it's the same thing. Okay? And if you start doing that, what happens is if you hold things against other people, if you hold things against yourself, now you enter into something called self-bitterness. Amen. Offense, self-bitterness. And it, it can turn into self-bitterness and then it can turn into resentment and unforgiveness. Okay? Well, what is it? What does it really mean? Resentment is basically, how do we identify if we're living in unforgiveness? Okay? Well, what if you have indignation at having been treated unfairly? How many people have been treated unfairly in here? <laughs> Hello, look around. <laughs> okay? How about if you're irritated with someone? How about if you got like a hard feeling towards somebody? How about like ill will towards somebody? You want somebody to drop off the face of the earth? <laughs> Bad feelings towards them, you know. How about if you see that person and you're like easily provoked to anger? I'm just saying. I'm not trying to start anything. Okay? So one of the things is when you forgive and you release people, basically what happens is your feelings aren't going to change right away. Amen. They won't, but they will over time. That's right. Amen. They will over time. So forgiveness really is an act, uh, um, it's an act of your will and obedience to the word of God. It's an, an obedience to Jesus. That's what forgiveness actually is. It's an act of your will. You don't have to feel like forgiving them. You don't have to feel a funny woo-woo feeling. The woo-woo feeling. You don't have to feel anything. It's not about that. It's about, it's an act of your will. This person has done this to me. Now God, out of an act of my will and obedience to you and obedience to your word, I choose right now to forgive that person. Father, forgive them. Father, and, and forgive me for holding, trying to hold on to this thing. Father, forgive me, I repent. Forgive them, Lord, wash them. I am not holding that against them any longer. Amen. Free them up. Matter of fact, Father, bless them. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, no, this is a key. I'm, I'm giving you keys, okay? Bless them. Is it going to hurt your flesh? The first time you do it, you'll be doing it, God bless them. 
Bless their little hearts. <laughs> okay, but after it'll get easier and easier and easier. Okay? And no, it really will. Okay? Now, you might have to do that. Because, like, you'll see the person. You ever see a person that's, like, really ticked you off? And then, like, you see them, like, three months later? And you're like, I'm going to go on the other side of the street. Uh-huh. Okay? Even though you've said, God, I made an act of my will. Forgive them. Forgive me for holding on to this thing. I still got some pain here, Lord. Uh, this thing is still feels pretty fresh. So forgive them, and Father, bless them. And as you keep doing it, you might have to do it like a hundred times a day. Yeah. And then a month later, you might have to do it 20 times a day. And then six months later, you might have to do it 10 times in a month. Yeah. And then a year later, you'll see them and you go, okay, it's still a little bit there, but I'm going to continue. No, I've forgiven them. They're going to stay forgiven. Father, bless them. And then you know what? Before you know it, your feelings have changed. And now and re- really you can go, when you're in prayer, you can go, Father, touch that person, Lord. I want to see him saved, healed, delivered. I want to see him set free. Father, I want to see him prosper. Yes. And then the love of God, God's love coming through you, can touch that person. Yes. Okay? Ain't going to happen overnight. Okay? But it's a process. And it all starts with an act of your will. Okay? Right. Not about a feeling. That's right. And it's not, when, when you forgive people, it's not saying that what was done to you is okay. I don't know why we get that mixed up. We think that if we forgive, it's like we're telling that person what they did is okay. Wrong. Amen. It's not. Amen. It's not okay what they've done. Of course, it's not okay what you've done. Amen. Okay? Okay, God will straighten it all out, you know, um, but we want to make sure that we release them so that we can actually be freed up. Because when you hang on to stuff, it's bondage. You know that, right? Amen. It's bondage. It'll just tear your emotions up. It'll tear your life up. It'll tear your health up. Amen. Okay? Forgiveness is tearing up that IOU. And it releases you from the act itself, the bondage from the act. Okay? Unforgiveness can be masked as regret. <laughs> Sometimes we, we'll think that, you know, well, boy, I wish I would have done this, and I wish I would have done that, and boy, if I could do this over, I would do, you know, and, that, and when you start looking at it, you're actually holding stuff against yourself. That's right. We just think it's regret. It's really unforgiveness at its root. Right. We're not forgiving ourselves, okay? So one of those things that Paul says, he goes, this one thing I do, I think we talked about this last night or something, didn't we? This one thing I do, it was wing night, by the way. I did not fast last night, okay? (laughs) But I did fast a lot this last week and a half. And I did that for you. And I did it for me, too. Because, you know, when you fast, you can actually hear God better. You fast for your future. You fast for other people. You fast for power. Just little keys. Keys of the kingdom. Okay? So what happens when you, when you start, you know, masking, it masks itself as regret, you know, and then you get bitterness and anger towards yourself and you know what that does to your body. I wish I would have done this. If I could do it over. You know, you're bound to the past. You're stuck in time. Amen. See, the person that's always looking at their past can never see their future. Amen. Okay? You can't. You can't see it. And Paul says, this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. I press forward. I stretch for the mark. I stretch for the finish line. I move forward. Amen. Okay? This is us as believers. We move forward. Amen. So when the enemy brings up your past and you know you've forgiven everyone, you just remind them of where he's headed. Right. Amen. Okay? Say, no, I've been washed by the blood. No, I've forgiven that person. They're going to stay forgiven. I've forgiven myself. I'm staying forgiven. I'm not going to be under condemnation. No. Amen. Matter of fact, you're giving me this. Well, let me tell you where you end up. Amen. You won't be around long. Amen. Yeah. Anybody seen the movie Groundhog Day? Yeah. I love that movie. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> yeah. See, when you, when you start looking at your past all the time, you just keep repeat, repeat, repeat day over and over and over again, okay? Now what that does is that leads you into depression, okay? It really does. It can lead you into suicidal thoughts. 
suicidality, uh, sickness, whether it be mental, emotional, spiritual, physical. It leads to autoimmune disease. The big one is arthritis. Inflammation, because why is it, why is it inflammation? You're holding on. Okay? It's the things that inflame you, you know. Things you're holding on to. So you get inflammation. Okay, when you hang on to things, it, uh, it blocks your prayers. Because it's sin. Just, just to let you know, it's sin. It blocks God from moving in your life. Now, since we, you know, travel a lot and minister a lot, you know, there was this woman, she was in the... Uh, Pain all over her body. 60% of her body was just in constant pain, chronic pain. Really interesting. She had 60% bone loss. Okay? So, she came up for, for prayer, and um, she had an abortion when she was younger. She asked Jesus to forgive her, and Jesus did. Amen. She did not forgive herself. So, guess what happens? Work through the problem. She ends up forgiving herself. What happens to her body immediately? Instantly she instantly got a miracle. Amen. Instantly got a miracle. Amen. I was ministering in another church. There was a woman in the front row, and uh, it was really comical because I'm kind of direct. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hate beating around the bush. It's just one of those things, you know. Uh, I'm kind of direct, so, you know. Pray for her, nothing happens. And I go, oh, God gives me a word. He goes, uh, she's got uh, unforgiveness. Boom, drop her in me. I go, okay. Um, you got unforgiveness. Her face changes. And she goes, I've been a Christian for 40 years. I will never forgive that person for what they've done. So be, be, me being me, very, very diplomatic, I said, you're not even saved. The whole church went dead quiet. And her eyes got like, I said, no, really, you're not saved. And the church went, <gasps> seriously, they really did. They went, <gasps> she was sitting in the front row. So I said, no, here's a scripture. You know, Jesus said, forgiven you shall be forgiven. If you don't forgive, he won't forgive you. So if you were to die right now, you bust out wide open. Sorry. <laughs> you got to deal with this issue. Because how did I know you had unforgiveness? Because God just told me. So he says, deal with it. Amen. So I work her through it. Took about 15 minutes. Guess what happens after she actually forgives that person and then herself? Immediately, she got a whole series of miracles. Boom, 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 boom. Her husband can't forgive himself. Okay? Wife, husband, he can't forgive himself. He was in the military. He'd been uh, injured and had severe spinal issues. Could hardly move and all kinds of pain. I lead him through. He had been overseas and he'd seen some things and done some things that uh, he just couldn't forgive. I lead him through that. Guess what happens after he forgives himself? Instantly, he got a series of miracles. Boom, boom, boom. He jumps up. He's in no pain. He can move any way he wants to. And he goes, I'm a medic. I know what's wrong with me. This is impossible. This is a miracle. Okay? And we saw him not that long, you know, not that long ago. And he goes, I'm still good. Hallelujah! Isn't Jesus wonderful? You know. So, forgiveness is really huge. So it blocks your prayers, you know. Un unforgiveness blocks your prayers. It's sin. And if you want scripture on that, you know, it's, it's uh, Psalm 66, 18, Isaiah 59, 2, John 9, 31, Proverbs 28, 9, Zechariah 11 through 13, on and on and on and on, okay? 1 Kings 8.30, it says, And hearken thou to the supplication of thy servant and of thy people Israel, when they shall pray towards this place, and hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place, and when thou hearest, forgive. Okay? So, when we have sin in our lives, if we have unforgiveness in our lives, it actually prevents God from hearing our prayers. Okay? It's sin. It blocks our prayers. God can't hear it. It's not that he can't hear it. He just won't acknowledge it. Okay? He hears. He just won't acknowledge because he wants us to get rid of some stuff first, okay? So we always want to make sure that God's ears are open to hear us, and there's nothing that is going to restrict him from hearing what we have to say, okay? Now, how often must, must we forgive someone? That's a question. I'm just going to ask you, how often? Every time. <laughs> Every time, 
which means what? Every time. Every time, okay? That's just not a number. You don't just calculate it. Love keeps no record of wrongs. I thought I had them at 49, uh, but no. 490, right, 490, 7 times 70. So, you know, you scratch them off. Mm, well, they're getting close. <laughs> of course, I've been probably over 490, you know, I don't know. Right? So, <laughs> she's going, right, yeah. Hey, I'm, being, I'm being real here, you know. And you know why I can laugh about it? I know I'm not alone. Right. <laughs> So that's a fatal error if we do not forgive, okay? It's fatal. Matthew 18, 21, then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him till seven times? <laughs> yeah, Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until 70 times seven. And you know, you can't count that high, so... So likewise, this is Matthew 18, 35. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if you from your hearts forgive not everyone his brother their trespasses. So you want to make sure from your heart you do it. Okay? And Luke 17, 3 says, Take heed to yourselves if thy brother trespass against thee. Rebuke him, and if he repent, forgive him. Okay, so you can still rebuke him, right? <laughs> Somebody trespasses against you, you can, you can rebuke him. Now, I know we've all done it. Uh-huh. Okay? And if he repents, sometimes a rebuke is what you need to repent. Because right. sometimes you don't even see you're in the wrong. That's right. Yeah. Okay? Repent. And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turn again to thee, saying, I repent, forgive him. Amen. Okay? Do you know that forgiveness is tied to healing? Here's one thing I've learned, you know, praying for people. If I can get people to forgive themselves and others, I'll see healings in a meeting go up 80%. Okay? Now, how many people are going to pray for sick people in here? Please, everybody raise your hand. Please. Okay? Because this is not just, uh, you know, you, you think this is just for like a couple people? You know, my Bible says that, you know what? These signs shall follow those who believe. They will lay their hands on the sick and they shall recover. Now, you all believe, right? Amen. See, the revelation you don't have, <laughs> the revelation you don't have is this. You haven't got a revelation yet. Some of you do, some of you don't. When you got saved, what, where did Jesus end up? By the Spirit, right? So when you're praying for somebody, are you really praying for somebody? Amen. See, that's why I have no problem praying for you. Amen. It is not my success, and it is not my failure. Amen. Okay? I have been free. Amen. See, a lot of people are afraid to pray for people because they think it's up to them. Amen. Get over yourself. Just pray for people. Lay your hands on the sick. They will recover. Because Jesus is in you. And as you lay your hands on the sick, it's not you, it's Jesus. I can't heal a fly with a broken wing. I'm serious. I can't. I can't. But I know who can. You see, I've seen Jesus do so many miracles, as you have. As you have. We've seen Jesus do so many miracles. Do I have faith? Hello. I've seen grow, Jesus grow out so many arms and legs, I, can't, I couldn't count them if I tried. I've seen pain disappear from so many people, people healed of cancer, diabetes, AIDS. <laughs> okay. So, it's not hard for me to imagine Jesus healing people. Okay. This is who God is. This is the God we serve. Nothing says every word of God is filled with power. It says no word of God is void of power. That means every word of God is filled with power. Okay? Nothing is impossible to the one who believes. To the one who believes, anything is possible. Okay? And we, see, we think too small. This is the word. Okay? 
Oh, no, no, it's, it's really true. It really is true. <laughs> you know, I could tell you stories where your head would just go tilt. <laughs> like a pinball machine. I'm, I'm serious. <laughs> like a pinball machine, I've seen stuff I just go tilt, can't comprehend it. Amen. Except the goodness of God. Amen. God, I, I don't even know how you even did it, God. Amen. And of course, I probably will never know how you did it. Amen. I'm just going to go thank you because you're so good. Because, you know, he doesn't want to see anybody in pain. He doesn't want to see anybody suffering. He doesn't want to see anybody in disease. Amen. That's not for his children. Uh-huh. See, the only one that convinces you of that is the enemy. Amen. Whose report will you believe? Amen. I will believe, believe the report of the Lord. Okay? Amen. All right, let's turn to James 4, 7 and through 10. You getting anything out of this word tonight? Yeah. Oh, we use this all the time. <laughs> Humility cur- cures worldliness. Okay. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Everybody knows this, right? Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. Humility is a good thing. Amen. See, I look at humility really as, as a position of power. I can't do this, God, but I know you can. Okay? Submit yourself to God. That's all of you. Okay, and then it says, do not speak evil of one another, verse 11. It says, do not speak evil of one another, brethren. Okay, turn to someone and say, brethren. Do not speak evil to me, and I won't speak evil to you. He who speaks evil of his brother and judges his brother speaks evil of the law and judges the law, okay? But if you judge the law, you are not a doer of the law, but a judge. There is one lawgiver who is able to save and destroy. Who are you to judge another, okay? Judging is not a good thing, okay? Forgiveness is a good thing. Unforgiveness is not a good thing, okay? We wanna make sure that A, we don't, we don't judge. Remember I told you uh, forgiveness is tied to healing? Can I give you a scripture on that? Because you really should have scripture for everything. Anytime somebody tells you something, you better have scripture to back it up. If they tell you something and there's no scripture, don't believe it. Don't believe it. It might sound good, it might, you know, but if there's no scripture to tie it to, let it go. Okay? I told you forgiveness is tied to healing. I'm going to prove it. Okay? Matthew 9, 6. <laughs> I love this scripture. And this scripture confused me for a while. It really did. Jesus reads the minds of the Pharisees. He's actually forgiving people their sins. And they're sitting back and they're going, man, who is this guy who thinks he can forgive sins? He he thinks he's God. He is. Okay. (laughs) Jesus is. Okay. So he says, he goes, uh, but did you may know, he's actually read their mail, and he goes, that you may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. Okay. Then saith he to the sick of the palsy, arise, take up your bed, and go into the house. Okay. Forgiveness is tied to healing, okay? Jesus has the power to what? Forgive sins, okay? You know what that means, to forgive sins? See, I pray for people, and and, and you know what? They get a miracle, get a miracle, 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 healing, miracle, and then nothing. I go, God, why'd you do that? He goes, word of knowledge. They have to deal with this issue. So I see no manifestation of a miracle or a healing. So I know something's blocking their healing. So God would drop it in. What is the issue? I would tell them, here's your issue. Will you deal with it? And if they repent and deal with it, miracle. And Jesus led me to this scripture. He wants to deal with what? The spiritual condition first, forgive sins, right? And then take up your bed and walk. Get your physical healing. The two are tied. (laughs) James 5.16. Let's see here. Oh, here's a good one too. Hmm. Let's go to James 5.15. It says, And the prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Okay? Confess your trespasses one to another, and pray for one another that you may be healed. Okay? The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Now, with that scripture, I would say this. 
Can I just give? Can I just be real with you? Amen. Okay. I study. Amen. I study the word. I study other people that move in miraculous. Okay. Okay. This scripture is very important. It says you confess your trespasses one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. That doesn't mean you go blabbing your sin to everyone in this church. Okay? Amen. You pick your uh, spiritual partner very carefully. Amen. Somebody you want to confide in. Okay? And where this scripture is really handy is when it comes to uh, uh, people with issues of pornography and lust. See, there's people that just pray and they go, gee, God, I've slipped, I fell, and you know what? God will forgive them, but they never can seem to break it off their life. Okay? The key is, guess what? They find a, a, an accountable person, a man, or if it's a woman with lust, then you go see a, an accountable woman. And guess what? They confess that sin to that person, and then they ask God to forgive them, and guess what happens? He actually removes it. And he removes that desire from them. Okay? So this is a lot of times we don't see certain things happen in church because we don't follow the instruction of God. Okay? I just gave you an instruction. Just so you know. Okay? So James 5.16, confess your sins. That's a good one. And of course, you know, you can actually, uh, you, you know, um, forgiveness and healing is actually tied to you can actually heal a land. Second Chronicles 7.14. And we all know this around election time, right? <laughs> Don't we always bring that up at election time, this, this scripture? Because we want our land to be healed. Right. I already voted, and no, I'm not going to tell you who I voted for, but it wasn't Hillary. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not lying to you either. Okay. And it took me about that fast to make up my mind, okay? Because I'm not, I'm not voting for a pastor. But I'm certainly not voting for a murderer. Okay. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm not. You know, if if you're not if if you're not pro-life, if you're not pro-life, you got to really think. You're going to have to really explain some stuff to the Lord. Okay. You know, you, there's nations been judged because they would actually take babies and put them on an altar. Okay. And yet we kill them in the holy of holies. I know God is not happy with that. I wasn't going to go there, but I just did. Amen. But I hope you still love me. I'm not politically correct, just in case you haven't figured that out. And I never will be. All right, so judgment, I'm going to give you the, the Greek for judge, to judge someone, uh, or to, just to judge is krino. That's the word, krino. And you know what it means? It means to pick out. To be of opinion. To pronounce or an opinion concerning right or wrong. To rule over, to govern. Hmm. Crino. To pick out. You ever pick out faults of people? <laughs> Boy, it got quiet in here. <laughs> you ever had an opinion about something? Or someone, mm, I know Sister so and so, she never should have done that. <laughs> what were they thinking? Now, if I was in that position, I would have never went down that path. No, you never been there? No, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, maybe. I can raise both hands on that. You ever been there? Oh, I'm, oh yeah. man. Well, you know, the spirit behind judging people is pride. Amen. Just just so you know, because, you know, you would never do that. I know better than that. I know better than them. You know, it raises that level of superiority over somebody. Amen. Which was, you know, that's how you can see unforgiveness Amen. creeping in. Same thing with, you know, it's, it's an issue of pride, you know. Not a good thing. You know, try, condemn, punish. You know, all has to do with judgment, you know, in a legal system. Turn, open your Bibles to Genesis 12. I want to show you something that is going to blow you away. How many people want to get blown away tonight? Amen. Okay. 
Maybe you already know this, but I don't think you do. Genesis 12, we'll look at the first three verses. <laughs> it says, now, Abraham, now the Lord had said to Abram, uh, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and I will make your name great and you shall be a blessing. And verse 3 says, I will bless those who bless you and I will curse him who curses you. Okay, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. <laughs> There's two different words there for curse. There's curse and then curses in verse 3. The first verse, the first curse means to make a formula against. Okay? And the second word, curses, means you get diminished or reduced to the judgment that you just made. So now, when you judge somebody, you're actually making a formula against them. And here's the worst part. You get reduced to the same thing. So you're going to find yourself, when you make a judgment about somebody, you're going to find yourself in a very similar situation. Amen. Well, you say, well, that just sounds like speculation. Really? <laughs> Want me to give you scripture? <laughs> Please. You ever hear of reaping and sowing? Have you ever seen somebody do something and you say, I'd never do that? Uh -huh. hmm. Sounds like King Saul and David. Let's see, David judged Saul for trying to save his kingdom. So what? Well, wow, it's funny. David murders Uriah, so David judged Uriah to save his kingdom. Hmm. How about Haman? <laughs> Haman and Mordecai. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, Haman makes a what? A gallows and a trap for the Israelites, right? For Mordecai and the Jews? Uh -huh. And what happens? He gets hung on his own gallows that he made. Well, that's just two examples. Let me give you some personal examples that I know of. I know this man, when he was a young man, when he was a young boy, and he used to have to mow the lawn for his dad, guess what? They had this really crappy lawnmower. So every time he would get part of the lawn done, this thing would break down and he'd have to spend hours fixing it. And he got so mad at his father, he said, when I grow up, I am never going to have a piece of crap lawnmower like this. And he made, he made a judgment against his father. <laughs> so now he's a man. He goes out and he buys a $3,000 lawnmower. Every time he gets on this lawnmower, it breaks, it quits. And they can't figure out why, because there's nothing wrong with it. So the Lord reminds them, remember when you were 12 years old and you judged your father? He says, yes, Lord. He goes, I want you to reverse the judgment. He says, Dad, I he says, Father, I reverse this judgment against my father. Forgive me, I repent. Father, bless my father. Guess what happens? He turns the key on his lawnmower, never had a problem since. Oh, you'd say, well, that's just one instance. Well, there's another man. He was a businessman, and he was, <laughs> he was a sales guy, and he was always getting ready to make this $1 million deal. And he'd get right to the $1 million deal, and it would fall through. Well, what he did was he didn't grow up in a, in a, in a family that had a lot of stuff, so guess what? He says, I'm never going to live like that. And he cursed his parents. He made a judgment against them. I, I'm not going to live like that. I'm going to have plenty. I'm going to have enough. And I'm going to be a millionaire. Every time he'd get to the deal, it'd fall through. Every single time. Year after year after year. So he asked the Lord, what's going on? Remember when you made that judgment against your parents? So he goes, Father, I reverse that judgment. I repent. Forgive me. Bless my parents. Within a week, $100 deals, $100 million deals just started going through. So... You reap what you sow. We can't afford to um, judge other people. Okay? Because it brings it on us. Okay? Why did so-and-so do that? I would never do that. How about father, mother, children, 
brother, sister, exes, employer, employees, father-in-law, mother-in-law, daughter-in-law, son-in-law, neighbors, co-workers. You can repent any time now as I'm teaching this. <laughs> How about your community? Anybody in your community? School, teacher, students. Turn to Luke 18. I'm almost finished here. Luke 18. I say finish, I'm, I'm just going to quit, you know. Luke 18, let's look at 9 through 14. I like a lot of scripture. Judgment, okay? Let's look, at this, let's look at this parable of Jesus, the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector. Um, Luke 18, 9. And he spoke this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this tax collector. I fast twice a week, I give tithes of all that I possess, and the tax collector standing afar off in the back of the church, right? would not so much as even raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you this, that man went to his house justified rather than the other, for everyone who exalts himself will be humble, then he who humbles himself will be exalted. You see, uh, you know, there's a few things you can take away from that. You know, he's got I, 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 I there, so he was full of what? Pride. <laughs> okay? So the Pharisee, he makes a what? A right judgment, but with the attitude of pride. Amen. Okay? But the tax collector just says, hey, God, have mercy on me. He didn't want to even dare to look up to God. You know, but from his heart, he says, have mercy on me. You know, it's that position of humility is a good thing. John 8. And it's important that you see this in the scriptures, you know. Even though you read this stuff a hundred times. You know the story of the, the woman caught in adultery and they're going to stone her. And they all pick up stones and what happens? Oh man, this is this story. I love this story. Because it shows you the heart of Jesus. You know, she apparently she's been caught in adultery, and uh, you know they're gonna they're gonna pick up stones and and, and stone her. And uh, you know Jesus stoops down, and he, he just starts making letters in the sand, and they all see it, and then they just start walking away one after the other. You know, and then, woman, where are those accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Okay. Then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Okay? See, this is the God that we serve. This is, this is our God. It's like when you're sincere and you say, God, man, I'm a sinner. I've really messed up. You know what he does? He says, you know what, son or daughter? I don't condemn you either. Matter of fact, I forgive you. I've, I've taken care of it at the cross. I've taken care of it at the cross. So this is why it's so important that we forgive ourselves, we forgive others, and we don't judge others because we don't want to bring that stuff on ourselves. It's bondage, okay? It's just bondage. And we don't need bondage. We are free indeed in Christ, okay? Where the Spirit is, there is what? Freedom, liberty, okay? So he says, walk in the Spirit. And then you will not fulfill the desires of the... Okay? Which means when you walk in the Spirit, now you're walking in forgiveness, you're walking not in judgment, but you're walking in love. Amen. Okay? Love covers a multitude of. So when your brother screws up or your sister screws up, put your arm around them and say, hey, don't be condemning, okay? Don't. Don't be condemning. Put your arm around them and say, Didn't, did you forget who you are? Did you forget who you are? This is not who you are. 
You're a child of the king. God loves you. I love you. Let's get this thing right. I'll help you. Don't shoot your dead, okay? Don't shoot your wounded here. See, anytime there's judgment and unforgiveness, it's always over a motive of, to feel superior over someone, you know? And we don't need that. Romans 14, 10 says, uh, don't judge your brother because, uh, you know, or why do you show contempt for your brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. See, the cross levels us all, okay? We don't do that. And I know, there's t I know there's people that say, you know what, they're in church to make sure everything's going right. Please leave. <laughs> the sin police. I'm sorry. Because you'll wreck everyone. You know, you will. You know. And I know, I know, I've seen people, I have. I've seen people, and you know what, God bless them. Lord, Lord bless them. Touch their hearts, Lord. You know, um, I've seen the holier than now. You know, that like to just hammer people, Amen. you know, but you have to really be, you have to be loving. That's not really what God's doing, okay? That kind of spirit is destructive, Amen. okay? That's not who we are. That is not who we are. Amen. That is not who God is, okay? Now, is there judgment in the word? Absolutely. You've got Sodom and Gomorrah, Paul and the sorcerer. You know, the pattern, you know, really determines the way and the will of God. Who's in the way of God? Okay? So everybody just needs to examine themselves and deal with that issue, okay? Right. And come alongside your brother, you know, or your sister. Now it's time for decisions. You've heard the word. It's in the atmosphere. Has, has anybody heard anything that they need to deal with? Have they dealt with it during the service? That's the first part, okay? So you just deal with that. You know, if you, if you have unforgiveness towards yourself, say, Father, I forgive myself. If you have unforgiveness towards somebody else, Father, I forgive them. I release them. Do not hold them accountable for this error. And Father, bless them. And help me, Father, to, to work through this. But I have forgiven them as an act of my will in obedience to you and obedience to your word. And they are forgiven and they're going to stay forgiven. And now, Father, when the memory or the pain comes up, Father, help me to just, just wash it away from me, Father, and just, just bless me and bless them for your glory in Jesus' name. Okay? Same thing with judgments. If you've judged people, reverse your judgment. Repent, reverse your judgment. Okay? So that you can move forward.